I managed to scrounge up my uh, presentation that should be showing up here that uh, I gave to the, the students last year at CCDC to tell them about their badges. And uh, we've only got a couple minutes, so I'm going to crank through this real fast and make sure that... Ten minutes. Go! All right, so yeah, I guess I'm like Charlie Sheen. I've only got one speed. Go right now. <coughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so badges, we don't need no stinking badges. Um, so making of the CCDC badge and asset access control system for last year, yeah, me, who cares? It's not what we're here about. All right, so here's the badge. Looks a little bit like last year, right? So we did some laser cut acrylic. Yeah, go figure. We already sense a theme here. Red team, red, blue team, blue. Exercise to control, whiter slash clear, and the volunteers were black. We had a much smaller crew last year. Um, in a form factor that was very similar to many access control systems, they were about the size of a credit card. Okay, a little bit larger to, uh, to facilitate the fact that we we're going to hang them on a lanyard. Um, but in fact, we actually did have an, uh, a credit card sized RFID tag glued to the back of the red and blue teams. Um, so one of the things that I learned is don't wait until the last minute to book the laser cutter or local hackerspace and, and artist collective um, because I was literally uh, cutting badges the night before competition. And we were there until about 11 o'clock, and I had to bribe some folks with some uh, dinner and some beer to stay actual much later than the lab was actually open. So that was loads of fun. Okay, so what was the badge electronics last year? They were passive RFID tags, uh, meaning that once you provide uh, RF energy to the tag, it pulls in the, the power, the energy from uh, the R field, uh, uses that as power to power itself up, and then use that energy to spit back uh, a unique number. Uh, so only the red and blue teams were enabled, and the badge cost with the acrylic and the lanyard ended up uh, about $6 each. And yeah, I will tell you more with some of this. So last, time, last year when I said earlier today that I failed with, with some of the things that we did this year, um, I wanted to give the red and blue teams the ability to take a device home that they could do all of the badge hacking. I want them to have a, a, an RFID tag that they could clone and give them the technology to be able to clone and sniff and all that type of stuff. Um, we looked at uh, one of the best uh, RFID tag stuff on the market for the uh, ACG dual OE, ISO OEM module. The problem is we couldn't find them in the US. Um, we had to import them from the UK and by the time we were done it was going to be about $120 person. That wasn't going to be something to do. And we add some more. Um, by the time we did that, it was you know $90. It ended up being more like $120 um, after doing some more of the math after the fact. Tried to get sponsors to do it. No, no luck. Um, and I tried to get the ACG readers in the US and had no luck there either. So instead, uh, we went for a parallax RFID reader that uh, not too long after the competition, uh, we were having them cleared out at our local radio shacks for $10 a pop. Nice. Um, so I bought all of them. Uh, we used an Arduino um, board uh, with a custom shield to support um, the access control reader and all the lights that needed to happen. So. Simple feedback, as I mentioned earlier. No swinging arm, no man traps, no guys with shotguns. Um, but two LEDs on top of the box, one red, one green. You present your card. If it turns green, you get to go. Great. So um, we gave them the rule that assume that if the system fails, that we've implemented it incorrectly. So if it loses power, assume the system fails open. So if you unplug the power, Assume that everybody can just walk in. Uh, one of the injects that we did to the uh, blue teams after they had gone home for the night was that we staged a power outage. So all of their doors to their blue team area failed open and Red Cell walked in and had physical access to all their systems. Convenient. Uh, we used the honor system because, well, no man traps and that type of stuff. Um, so to be able to recreate this, we wanted this to be very inexpensive so the students could take these back um, and, and do some of these types of things on their own because um, we didn't give everybody their readers to be able to take home and test all that stuff. Um, so we wanted to give them everything they needed, all the circuit diagrams, um, all of the code, you name it, so that they could buy a $28 uh, Arduino and potentially a $10 RFID reader and recreate some of this type of technology uh, back at school. Um, and then the other one, of course, which we ended up a little bit challenged this year was making it transportable so we didn't have to bring door frames because I wasn't going to drive from Rhode Island here. Um, we wanted to make it sort of TSA friendly so uh, I didn't get the rubber glove treatment. Um, and surprisingly enough, I didn't get the rubber glove treatment this time, but we had a lot more badges and a lot bigger box. So that was, that was interesting. 
all right, so yeah, we wanted them to be able to recreate it um, uh, after the fact, because quite honestly, the learning around this type of stuff and these types of technologies shouldn't end at Saturday night. So we wanted them to have something, and this year we did a lot better that they can take all their parts home. Um, we released all the details to them on how they can hack this stuff and some of the things that we expected um, at, uh, at the end of competition. Here were some of their rules, um, especially for, for Red Cell. Basically, if Red Cell was able to compromise a badge um, and they were able to maintain access uh, into day two, we were going to tell Red Cell that they could walk into the blue area anytime they wanted as long as they didn't do the touchy-feely thing and didn't throw punches and that type of stuff. Um, part of that game is that we gave uh, Blue Cell the opportunity to come to the integrator and say, uh, we need a badge pr reprogrammed. It was, we think it was compromised. We need to have our access control system updated because we've lost a badge. We want to have this number removed and those types of things. Um, so we gave them those options. Uh, some of them chose to do so. They did have one badge that got cloned, um, but the whole Red Cell cloned every one of their badges to the same number. So they just removed that one number and then they no longer had access. Um, they had the opportunity to come see me as their integrator and reflash numbers on badges and, and those types of things. Um, but if case they screwed something up or I screwed something up, we gave them access based on the color of their badge just in case the, they uh, um, did some of that stuff. Um, one of the things that, uh, Paul, that you did as part of the, the ha hacking the badges, um, he hacked the integrator. That was me. So uh, I was the guy responsible for putting these things in the locations and giving the badges and, and maintaining the system. Uh, Paul, when I was an away, uh, away from, from the integrator's office, he walked into the integrator's office, hit up arrow, and did command history, and put his badge on top of the badge rewriter, hit enter, and reprogrammed his badge as one of the uh, blue teams. While I wasn't well, sitting there, it was a little more scientific than that. Yeah. I did read all the red team's badges. You did, you did. To see what all, because I knew, <laughs> right, they had blue team and they had red team. Right. So I knew if I knew all of the red team's badges numbers that were assigned to them, that anything that was not that number was potentially a blue team badge. Right. And I, I knew how to rewrite it um, because that was part of the integrator. We could go to the right. integrator and get it rewritten. I just needed to know what number. And yep. Larry left his command line history in there, so I just read through it and said, oh, that's a blue team number. But then I also realized that there was an even easier way to do that. Yes. Yeah, so there was definitely an easy way. And if they wanted a badge re renumbered, they needed to tell me a number. Uh, one of the secrets that we didn't tell them is me being the integrator. Uh, you, normally, you'd see an integrator do these types of things and want uh, access to the system to be able to configure it, right? So how do you give access to your integrator or your person doing support? Well, you give them an ID in the system. So I had a badge that worked on both systems. So conceivably, if they could have figured out what that number was, um, they could have had access to either location based on my RFID tag. There was a problem. It was very difficult to read my RFID tag. I have an RFID implant. So I have a glass tag. If you remember a couple slides ago, we had that little picture of this little uh, capsule. I have one implanted in my hand. That unique number gave me access to both of the readers. If they were smart and had done some research and knowing that the RFID was, uh, after, what the RFID stuff was after the fact, and when they went back to the hotels at night, there's a video of me getting that RFID tag implanted on YouTube, and as well as uh, what that number was when we, after we implanted it and did the test. So the number is available on YouTube. I published it in a number of places on the internet. So they had the number already. They just needed to know where to look for it. I, I should have known that. You should have known that. You should have known that. Because I think I told you and you forgot about it. Probably. In, in any case. Um, so to give that uh, a wrap up, um, we did tell them sort of the ways they could hack that, whether they be clone badges, you know, some of the things that Paul did to determine what badges were which. Um, the badges were numbered sequentially. So if uh, red team and blue, or the red team were able to figure out that you know, their badges were 0 through 100, um, what happens if they program a badge as 101? Well, guess what? It's a blue team badge because integrator just took out of their inventory sequential, sequential numbers. So um, those are some of the stuff. They could have also, um, I had some bits and bobs as I, as I sort of referenced in this slide. I had a serial terminal they could have hooked up to the reader, gone up to it, and it had to spit out what the tag number when it was read uh, coming across that RFID reader. So they could have done some hardware hacking as well. Um, exposed ports, they could have reprogrammed the other team's readers to not let them into their environment um, and let red teams in. So they could have added their own badges to that. Cool. Okay. Thanks, All Larry. Right.